October 1994 brought fresh changes to New Orleans in a new police chief, Richard Pennington. So, how do you like our first? Pennington was an outsider from Washington, D.C., hired in the hopes of reforming the Crescent City's crooked police force. The FBI invited the new chief for a meeting. Then Haddon introduced J.J. He informed Pennington that Operation Shattered Shield was uncovering corruption deep in the force that he was about to head. His cooperation would be critical for the success of Operation Shattered Shield. On the streets of New Orleans, Davis and Williams were still on active duty, cruising their territory. Len Davis had a long list of public complaints against him. During their rounds one night that October, Davis and Sammy Williams patrolled the Desire housing project. Seeing the pair of cops approach, two youths took flight. Williams chased one teenager down, bludgeoned him, and left him bleeding in the street. At that moment, Kim Groves, the victim's aunt, decided that police had terrorized their neighborhood long enough. That. The next day, Groves, a 32-year-old mother of three, filed a complaint against Lynn Davis and his partner. She cited the pair for police violence. An officer alerted Davis about the complaint. You want to know his name? Officer Davis, do you know him? Yeah, this is definitely a... Assistant U.S. Attorney Mike McMahon saw the report. She reported not only Sammy Williams, who did the actual brutality, but Len Davis as well, who, who had nothing to do with that pistol whipping. And uh, at that point, uh, Len Davis became uh, uh, enraged. For Davis, Grove's complaint came at the worst possible time. It would bring unwanted attention just as the new police chief was coming on board. I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get him. Len Davis vowed to get revenge. The same day that Kim Groves filed her complaint, Richard Pennington was sworn in as New Orleans' new chief of police. That marked the start of Shattered Shield's final phase, the shift from an FBI effort to a partnership with a city desperate to clean house. That very night, Agent Jenkins recorded several conversations that would show just how rotten some of the city's men in blue had become. The first call was cryptic. Hours after Pennington was sworn in, Len Davis made a call on his cell phone. He gave an order to an Look, unknown man. I need you to do a 30 for me. Yeah. The FBI taped the conversation, but Grove. because Davis spoke in modified police code, yeah. agents didn't know what it meant. While they attempted to decipher it, Agents recorded a second, more disturbing call. This time, the unknown man called Davis. As they spoke, a police dispatcher announced a murder in the Desire housing project. The victim's name, Kim Groves. When Davis heard the news, he cried, Rockabye. It was the triumphant cry of a killer. When he later heard it, the call shocked Assistant U.S. Attorney Mike McMahon. As soon as he confirmed the name of Kim Groves, Davis shut off the radio, and then on the, um, uh, the wiretap conversation uh, uh, over the cell phone, just exulted in a primal scream of delight that indeed Kim Groves uh, was dead. 